And also here, I also include this because you can see um, a lot of the designs have relied on uh, curly Q springs instead of uh, instead of uh, more traditional springs because you you can actually make springs out of plastic using that design, um, and they might last longer than three or four flexes. Um, and th there's a 22 single action or a single shot pistol uh, called the Songbird. Um, and again, everything except for a couple rubber bands and a uh, nail plus some extra washers just to make sure it gets over the line of, there's actually, in the law, you have to have a certain amount of weight in metal in your gun. Um, again, so it, so it sets off the metal detector because we don't want no porcelain guns. Put the metal in the silencer. And uh, the, the guy that designed this just just out of giggles also posted, hey, I found out that I can replace the rubber band with a condom. Just, <laughs> just in case if you couldn't find any office supplies. Um, 3D print the condoms too? <laughs> <laughs> um, Nine months later. And uh, th this, is, <laughs> this is a pretty interesting design because that... Uh, the, the blue part is the barrel, and the other side, and you push it out from the other side and reload it. So, yes, it's still a single shot, and yes, you have to take the barrel off the gun to reload it. But the guy simplified the process of getting to that point um, a, a good bit. And interestingly, he tried putting a metal barrel in it, and the metal barrel wouldn't work because there wasn't enough friction between the metal and the plastic and the barrel kept popping out. Uh, here's another shot of it and you can see the finger hole up there. And like I said, you can see uh, he, he, the uh, couple extra uh, nuts to make sure that yes, it'll set off a metal detector. Um, and people have gone from that to uh, 3D printing receivers. This is a 1022 rifle receiver, which uh, Ruger 1022 um, is probably the most common 22 rifle out there at the moment. Uh, it has been for a number of years. Uh, and remember, for the most part, the receiver is the part that the government considers a gun. Uh, legally, everything else is just an accessory. Um, uh, that's that's the part that if it was mass manufactured, that's the part that has the serial number. That's the part that when you buy that, that's when you have to go through the background check, all that fun stuff. So yes, he went off and bought all the rest of it off the shelf, but hey, you know, according to the government, that barrel is an accessory, not part, not not uh, required with the gun. Um, and similarly, people have been three D printing. Um, AR-15 lowers a good bit. Uh, this is one of my favorite designs because uh, to get around weird stress issues with weird angles and stuff like that, the guy just said, okay, fine, I'll just print it out all flat and, and uh, bolt it together. Uh, one of those really, well, that's a simple and elegant solution to a problem people have been beating their heads over. And, uh, of course, while you're 3D printing stuff, you can have fun with it. Uh, nice skull design. Um, and uh, here's a wonderful example of 3D printing as a very useful uh, solution for prototyping. Uh, this is another one of those that I think if the guy got a deal and started actually manufacturing it, I think a good number of people might actually buy that because it's pretty cool looking. Um, again, this is actually an AR, the, the 3D printed part is the lower and buttstock, and the top part is uh, standard off the shelf AR-15 upper uh, in a uh, pretty nifty looking ballpark design. Um, and uh, he posted just remember, folks, make sure you get the 20-inch uh, barrel, not the 16-inch barrel, so that you have overall length, so that it's not considered a short-barreled rifle, uh, as far as the ATF is concerned. 
because going to jail sucks. Um, and here's a diagram of, of all the different bits in uh, color coding uh, printed out. And of course, if anybody's been listening, uh, been looking at 3D printed stuff in the news lately, I'm guessing you guys have seen this monstrosity. This is a 3D printed rail gun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it uh, weighs about 20 pounds <laughs> uh, and uh, fires uh, an aluminum slug about that long um, and uses uh, 1800 joules of, of energy to, to launch that sucker. Uh, that sounds a lot. Yeah, I, looking at his penetration tests, I think it's about as powerful as a BB gun. Did he get an ATF letter on it? Because uh, there's no expanding gas, it's not a firearm. Right. right. It, it's because because there's no combustion. Technically, this is not a firearm. Mm. Depending on what state you're in, uh, I think it was Wisconsin just recently passed a law saying that oh yeah, BB guns are also firearms as far as the state is concerned. Uh, did they say? I believe they said weapons. Or, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I have to look at the wording. Out. The feet per second thing. Uh, oh, is it, it, they care, it's a feet per second issue? So does that cover okay. crossbows too? Yeah, it's, it's up to that state. Um, well, we're talking about Wisconsin. Uh, again, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not a lawyer from that state, so. Yeah. Uh, Fan baseball players. This is a matter of being the president. Right, right. Um, but uh, I, I think it's damn impressive that he got it. He, he got that working at all. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and and a good part of that is technology. Right now, we can build real guns that are at, that are really worrisome as a weapon. They're just gigantic. You know, at, at this point, it's the yes, I can build a 20-pound rifle that's about as powerful as a BB gun, as you know, uh, a, a little Red Ryder BB gun. Um, and it looks cool. And it looks damn cool. Yeah, I, I, I I'm expecting to see something like this at Dragon Con next year, at, at, at uh, carried by one of the folks in cosplay. Um, that's the more passive liberator, though, when the UN forces come in, it looks so cool. They trade their <laughs> rifle to you in there exchange you for that to send home to their kids. And then they find out, damn it, it's worthless. Um, and uh, this is actually a 3D printed gun. One. Yep. Uh, in stainless steel, it's one of, it, it, now it's using one of those 3D printers that if you contact the company asking how much is that is their printer, they'll tell you, oh, no, you can tell us what you want us to make, but we're not selling it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they initially built this just to show the capability of their metal 3D printer. Uh, there's been a lot of concern about strength and all that. They said, yeah, uh, we printed everything except for the springs and the magazine. And we shot 5,000 rounds through this thing, and it's still holding up. Um, to give you an idea of the cost, though, they did make a limited run of 100, and went through the legal hoopla to sell it, sell them for about $12,000. Um, and you know, a, a plain Jane 1911 mass market. What six hundred to a thousand dollars, depending on manufacturer. So again, we're talking about a huge difference in cost. Um, but for prototyping, excellent. Um, now that we're done with the three D printed stuff, let's look at the stuff that people have been doing for years and years and years. This is a zip gun, um, and yeah, it's a brass pipe, some fitting and a drill press. Uh, that black part is, 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 they actually decided for some sick reason to stick a silencer on their zip gun. Because why not? Um, <laughs> well, it's a subsonic 22, wasn't it? Right, well, and, and, and to protect, protect hearing, they were, they were thinking of the children. 
<laughs> <laughs> the there you go. Again, they didn't want to disturb the neighbors. I, um, just a note, I, I, I am a big fan of silencers. I, I, uh, I, I just don't want to pay the $200 tax stamp because I'm a cheap bugger and don't like doing paperwork. Um, if they got rid of that, I would buy five instantly. Just do an oil change. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I don't like going to jail. <laughs> um, it, it, if you didn't catch that, uh, what we was talking about is at, at gun shows, they, they sell these things that, that are uh, solvent, traps. solvent traps for cleaning aids, where it's basically just a, a thread no, adapter. Yeah, a thread adapter that you can screw with an oil filter onto the other end. That way, your, your dangerous and toxic cleaning solvents that your environmental self would not like contaminating the groundwater can be captured and properly disposed of in an oil filter. Right, because because you love Absolutely you, you love the Mother Earth, Earth and, and you don't want that to happen. Um, I, now, if you accidentally load the gun and fire the trigger, it also happens to act exactly like a silencer. Um, but if you do that, then it becomes illegal. Uh, so don't do that. My neighbor's cat says. Um, and uh, you know, and, and this is this is an example of just how stupid simple it is to make a firearm. Is I mean, just this is a spring-loaded bolt fires from from uh, an open bolt. You pull pull the screw back, put in that notch when you're ready to fire. Just push it into the channel, and it slams the firing pin into uh, the primer, sets it off, and bang, and then you have to do whatever you have to do to reload it, which chances are with this thing is, is unscrew the bolt and get rid of this, that, or the other. Um, they also fit in a Wii mode. They also fit in, I, I, okay. <laughs> sure. Because you really hate your TV. <laughs> Uh, and here, here's one that somebody decided, yeah, I'm going to actually uh, go to wood shop and, and build a bit of a handle, so, because the barrels get hot after a while. Um, and uh, th this was one that uh, they found in India, uh, one of those countries where it's pretty much illegal to own firearms. Uh, so he built a zip gun with using and using another piece of the piping, made a handle for himself. And you can see in this particular case, yeah, which gauge do we want? Um, looks like 22, might be nine, nine millimeter, kind of hard to tell, and uh, a shotgun shell, which probably would be 12 gauge. Um, uh, can I propose that it might be a Russian 12.7 millimeter, given that he's an Indian? Uh, it's. A distinct possibility, yeah. Well, you know, with, with the shotgun shell, I can see the red bit, so I know it's a plastic shell, but that's about all I can tell you. I'll tell you a great story on the 12.7 meter. We need to drink later. <laughs> drink! <laughs> um, also, it's always fun to see what you can find at Home Depot. Uh, this guy built a shotgun. Uh, primary, uh, using some piping and a grease gun. That's so, sweet. So, you know, you, 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 have, you have the nice handle and you have a trigger on it and everything just ready to go, right? Um, also, also, while you're looking at uh, stuff you can pick up at Home Depot, yeah, a staple gun. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and again, th this was a shotgun. Uh, this was just a shroud cover covering the actual barrel. Um, what's that? I did the sling. Yeah, yeah, you could put put a sling on it because why not? It's so heavy. <laughs> right, it's so heavy. Um, and uh, as we were talking about earlier uh, with my shirt, here, here's a uh, better shot of an AK. 47 receiver at, at, before it gets bent up. Um, you can find these on the internet for ten dollars. Um, if you if you have the ability to bend metal at a straight line, um, two folds and you're good. 
uh, so it and I as a thought experiment I've, I've always been curious if I could just you know figure out the proper dimensions and print it out on a sheet of paper and use that as a template and I really don't see why you couldn't and just the okay yeah you, you can any metal you got is good and when I say any metal you know that shovel you have in the shed that you don't really use? <laughs> yeah, a, a guy took his shovel that he never really used, and it was a little rusted, and so he decided, oh, I'll chop, chop the uh, handle off and, and use the blade and make an AK receiver. <laughs> and, uh, oh, hey, the, the handle's still there, so that's the buttstock. <laughs> if you fold the paper and fiberglass and sprinkle metal dust on it, there's a possibility that... Ooh, interesting idea. Or kind of like you can just hang in your tool rack and everything. Exactly, there's exactly. There's no amazing uh, things. Yes, sir. See, back to the three D print stuff for a second. I I was under the impression that one of the government's big concerns is actually high capacity magazines. It's it's real easy to do that. You just buy a bunch of other springs now. And again, a, a high capacity magazine is a box with a spring on it. So. Yes, you can 3D print one. I, you know, you can also fold one up with, with metal that, with, with sheet metal you can get anywhere. It's a uh, high capacity magazines. So no, there shouldn't be a ban on that. I, but laws and all that fun stuff. Um, that I, I think there's a good bit of excuses to figure out how we can get the people that are scared to let us ban things because we want to more than anything else. That offends me. <laughs> yes, yes, that offends me. That that keeps me up late at night. I, I think that looks scary. Therefore, it should go away, and it should be legal, so nobody should be able to see it. I'm triggered. Um. Also, at Home Depot, you can pick up stuff to just. Build a machine gun while you're at it. Um, full auto machine guns, like I said, built after 1986 are very much illegal in this country. Don't do it. Um, the guy that put this together was in the U.S. and said, "Oh, oh, well, I never put a firing pin in it, so it's not a so so it's not a functioning gun. Um, it, it's an open bolt machine gun putting." a firing pin on it is kind of, if, if you can get to this point, you, you can put a little piece of metal in, in uh, on the bolt face. It's a prop for my YouTube movie. Yes, right. Uh, and in this case, I, I believe that's a, a Sten magazine that, you know, the guy said, ah, screw it, I'm, I'm not actually going to build much of a handle, you can just hold on to the magazine. Um, and again, you know, a tube, the uh, a spring out of I, I think again out of a caulking gun. That seems to be a fairly popular source. Uh, a, a little bit of welding knowledge and a drill press, and you're good. Uh, oh, and I think some uh, bit of a bike tire for for the back of the grip. <laughs> Uh, here, uh, here it is completely disassembled, and yeah, you can see that that's the spring out of a caulk gun, um, and it doesn't look terribly difficult to assemble that to me, uh, or or to fabricate it rather. Um, and most of that stuff, and there's a good chunk of that stuff that he just got without modifications from Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever. Um, speaking of stents, uh, there, there's a joke uh, in the gun blogging community that, yeah, you can go to Home Depot and pick up an 80% Sten gun and finish it. And it, again, a, a, a small amount of welding and some tubes and, and you're good. Um, by the way, you can find a PDF how to build this on the internet. I'm not going to tell you where to find it here. Uh. Lowe's and Home Depot both sell uh, 22 caliber nail guns. It fires the nail yep. and uses a 22 blank. 
Yeah. That shouldn't be hard to convert. Yeah. Uh, also, one of those PDFs on how to build. Ah, Mac 10 using uh, uh, using square tubing. So, so you don't even really have to fold anything. You just have to cut it in a couple strategic spots and weld them together. Um, and uh, of course, as I was talking about with 80%, the, does, ever, does anyone in here not know what I'm talking about when I say an 80% lower? Okay. So what I'm talking about with an 80% lower is, so if you, if you buy a uh, lower receiver for, a, for an AR-15, you have to go through background check, um, and it has to be a serialized part, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there are people out there that sell kits like this where it's what's called an 80% receiver, where they have done roughly 80% of the work. As far as the government is concerned, it's a paperweight. Uh, you go in with a drill or a drill press, uh, remove the, ex the material uh, so that you have the cavity to put the trigger uh, assembly in and all that fun stuff. Um, and you've got a full-blown receiver that should work for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> About a year and a half ago, I actually sat through a presentation by an ATF agent, and the subject came up, and what he said is that while in a court of law that may not actually fly, the ATF will consider an 80% piece of plastic as a full receiver for their, for their purposes. Well, I will have to say that there are many companies out there that that is their primary business, and I'm going to say that that gentleman is wrong. Of, of course he is. Um, just, just, just simply because, oh hey, there's all these companies that are doing it in very public locations in front of the ATF and have ATF letters saying otherwise. Now granted it's the ATF, so what they say on Tuesday may not be the same thing on Thursday. I'm going to be the conspiratorial asshole and say that they're sitting there waiting for a whole bunch of people that are otherwise going nuts to become in possession of something that they later unilaterally declare technologically illegal so they can seize your rights for life. Or that, eight 8% manufacturers and demanded customers. That's not a conspiracy. And um, the, 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 one, the one that I'm the aware of... You bring the, the NSA into it and say, oh, well, they're just seeing everything we're doing anyway. And everyone goes through several different merchant merch, merch, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, They go through several different merchant companies. I mean, yeah. the, 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 one that, the, the one case that I'm aware of where they did that... Um, was I believe Ares Manufacturing, where they were actually, where Ares was actually building the receivers, um, drilling out the spots and refilling it with a different color plastic. And I kind of have to agree with the ATF that, no, you, you went ahead and completed the receiver and then filled it in. Once it's 100% complete, it's 100% complete. A friend of mine's a Navy machinist um, that got drug into court and um, barely was allowed to retire 20 years in this, because of what happened in the civilian world with him making them and punching dimples into them. Yeah. And they were using the constructive possession interpretation, yeah. saying that it is conceivable that the actions of a reasonable person could make a complete product from what you've given them. Yeah. And it's and, not, and in fact, 80%. Is in fact beyond 80 percent because the intellectual capacity has grown. Yeah, it, well, and, and it's and it's something that gets the, the line gets played with ever so often. Um, and there have I believe there have been some cases where the ATF has basically said, yes, this is this is uh, manufactured possession, and just think, well, yes, if you have a full blown machine shop, at which point you could build one out of a block of aluminum. So well, now that that is a machine. Or you could download a mold and then fill it with JB Weld. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and again, like I said, I'm going with. There's a lot of companies out in the open, very publicly, selling these things with ATF letters. Um, I've I've talked to a couple sure ATF guys that had no clue what their agency was doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and and that's. 
that's also an issue where there's a lot of laws that it's well where, where it boils down to well what's legal and what's illegal is what the ATF says is the but that's not how laws should work um, but that's a different panel um, and uh, finally here here's a here, here's here's an here's an 80 percent aluminum receiver and this particular one is uh, Cody Wilson and uh, defense distributed are coming out with what they call the ghost gunner uh, thank you California for giving us that name uh, and for fifteen hundred dollars you can get a uh, little CNC machine that you can feed 80% blowers, hit a button, and it'll do all the cutting for you. Um, I'll be interested to see how far this goes. Um, right now they're doing pre-orders. Uh, part of the issue is they're actually having problems finding 3D, or having, uh, finding CNC manufacturers that are willing to partner with them. Um, because they're 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 afraid of legal and political backlash. Um, Just put your name on a list for that. Yeah. <laughs> Pay in cash. For uh, two hundred bucks, you you can put your name on a, on a list for it and. Uh, Two more bucks, one four. Right. Um, and the ATF has has already stated, you know, if you own a CNC machine, you can't have people pay you. 600 bucks to come over and push the button. So no, you're still building it. So I'll, I'll be curious to see how uh, this works where they're selling the entire machine already set up to go and programmed to do it. Um, the program separately from the anonymous website. Right. Well, and 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 you will you will they 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 state you will be able to use it as a normal CNC machine later on. So $1500 for a little CNC machine. Not that bad. Um, talking about a, a couple different sites, uh, homemadeguns.wordpress.com. They don't really tell you about how building them. They, it's just a lovely repository of pictures of homemade guns that people have found or posted. Um, a lot of a lot of the zip gun pictures that that I uh, showed came from them, um, and. They, they, they even have some of the uh, ones that, if you've ever seen some of the stuff that the Pakistanis have made by hand. The Bolt Action AK. Uh, the, yeah, there, there's, there's a few of those that uh, you honestly couldn't tell the difference between that one and the factory made one until you went to try to swap parts. Uh, uh, Deathdist.org is a defense distributed, as Cody Wilson's site. Um, currently, it is very slim on information because of all the cease and desist letters that he's got. And oh yeah, he's in court trying to say that he can actually produce this information. Um, and uh, printedfirearms.com is a uh, a good source. That that's where I got uh, the revolvers um, that uh, Songbird twenty two. Um, and I believe they do have, you were asking about files to download, and I believe they do have files. Now again, with the, all the stuff going on, they had files yesterday, they may not today, just depending on, because uh, it's, it's questionable as to whether it's legal to put that on the internet because people from England might see it. Um, Posted on an Iranian web server trying to shut down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, and that's it. Uh, do I have, do I have any questions? Are you familiar with P A Luti? With what now? P A Luti. P A Luti. I am not. The British gun factory. That's which sounds like a controversy. Uh, I'm. It's probably a suit. Okay, I'm I'm not familiar with with him. No. He's he's before you know. A lot of this that we showed up uh, in the late 70s, throughout the 80s, and up to the early 90s, and then he all of a sudden disappeared. Oh, okay. um, he wrote out a bunch of diagrams for homebow firearms, and uh, for you know, BitTorrent was really big. All the little PDFs that were floating around, uh, you know, Open Tracker and Napster and Pop mm -hmm. Networks and stuff like that for uh, you know, build your own guns. 
a lot of them were rip-offs of some PDFs that he produced. Okay. But okay. they were originally in print form. Um, I don't know if they were originally British distributed or if they made it through that. Oh, okay. What's yeah, that, I, that, I, I think I think I've Arizona seen Arizona that shows the like how to kill people books and like. <laughs> Every guy that ever blew something up in America, or yeah. I, I, I think I think I have seen some of his work, um, but it's Paladin kind of Press. <laughs> yeah, he was the one who came up with the twist barrel, twelve gauge shot okay. pistol. Okay. Um, and a lot of these. Um, sorry. It, it came with the um, the the British standard pipe dimension uh, Sten gun. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and as, as you saw, a Sten gun really is yeah. is pretty simple. Um, they they were manufactured in World War II specifically because they're stupid simple to build. Um, and I think I'm out of time, but uh, it, I'll be wandering around the con, and it, I'm I'm one of those people that yeah, it's hard to get me to shut up about these type of subjects. So thanks, everybody.